This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Herodimos, and today we're going to take a look at vectors. Uh, vector. A vector is anything that has um, magnitude and direction. All right, so that's a definition of what a vector is. Uh, so, like if you say that a plane is flying uh, at uh, north going 500 miles an hour, that's a vector because it has direction, it's got a speed, it's got magnitude. So, uh, you know, if you're skateboarding and you're going, uh, let's see, three miles per hour and you're going south, that's a vector. Now, if someone says, hey, I was on the highway and I was going uh, 60 miles an hour, that's not a vector because you only have magnitude there. You don't have a direction. Okay, so now that we've got the idea, at least of conceptually what a, a vector is, sometimes what we want to do is take a vector and break it up into horizontal and vertical components for a variety of tasks when dealing with forces, uh, especially engineers, architects, physicists, you know, people who work with moving objects. They wanted to study forces and how they behave together, whether it's construction or something else. Uh, all right, well, let's say we have a, a vector and let's say we ha we know that uh, there is a vector or a force, let's just say a force, which is a vector, a force that is at a 35 degree angle and it's 120 newtons. So the first thing I would do is I would draw a picture of this. I would say, okay, here's my vector. So I've got this vector and you always use an arrow to designate what the vector looks like. Uh, it has a point of origin and it has a head, so a tail and a head. So it's showing you the direction of the vector. Uh, let's say it's a 35 degree angle, so in other words what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw uh, a coordinate system. So I'm going to draw an x-axis and I'm going to draw a y-axis and I'm only doing this in the first quadrant because I, at the moment I only care about the first quadrant here. So I have this vector and what I'm trying to do is figure out what is the horizontal and vertical components of this vector. All right, well, first of all, we know that it is a 35 degree angle. So I'm going to put a 35 here, indicate that angle. All right, let's see. We also know that it is a 120 newtons. So a newton is a type of way to measure force. So we know that the magnitude is 120 newtons and the angle it makes with the x-axis is 35 degrees, so it definitely is a vector. It has both components of direction and magnitude. All right, now when we calculate uh, horizontal and vertical components, what you do is you draw, almost like drawing a reference triangle for trigonometry, but I'm going to draw a segment that goes back down to the x-axis, so it makes a right angle. So I've got a right triangle. So once I have a right triangle, all the rules of trigonometry now apply. Uh, and I guess it applies for any triangle, but it's nice because I've got right triangle trig to deal with. All right, well, we know that if we're going to calculate, let's say here's y, we know this is x, right? We know that those are <coughs> the values. So here's our vertical, that's the value of our vertical component, and x is the value of our horizontal component. Well, we should know that if you're taking the cosine of this angle, 35 degrees, we know it's equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's x over 120, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to multiply both sides by 120. Right, so I'm going to multiply a 120 here, I'm going to multiply a 120 here, and that's going to cancel the 120s here. All right, so in doing so, I get x on the right side is equal to 120 times the cosine of 35. Okay, so that's what x is equal to. <coughs> and I actually uh, took this into the calculator a little bit earlier and it turns out that this is 98.30 if you round it to the nearest hundredth and that's what I'm doing rounding it to the nearest hundredth 
So that's the horizontal force. All right, let's do this again now for the vertical force. So likewise, I'm now going to do, uh, let's separate this so we know one problem for the next. I'll draw a line here. So let's do this now for sine. So we'll do the sine of 35 degrees is equal to adjacent, I'm sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. So it's y over 120. All right, so likewise, I want to solve this problem. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 120. Oop, a little sloppy there. Let's take care of that. 120, there we go. And let's see, the 120s are going to cancel. So let's see, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 120 sine of 35 equals y. So 120s cancel. And again, I plugged this into a calculator earlier. And that is the approximate sign. So I know that it is going to be approximately, because i got to round it once I deal with this trig stuff. It's 68.83. Uh, 68.83 is what that comes out to be. So I have my horizontal, right? Here's the horizontal component. Here's the vertical component. And uh, I'm good to go. And I have that broken up. Um, if you're wondering why we break these up into horizontal and vertical components, uh, sometimes what we do is then add our vectors uh, using these horizontal and vertical components. Anyway, that's a whole other video. All right, so we're done. We, com we uh, are completed our objective, which was to break it up into horizontal and vertical components. So I know that um, if this is a plane, uh, or I'm sorry, this is, we said this is a force. If this is some kind of force, I know what the uh, vertical force is, 68, almost 69 newtons. And then I know the horizontal force is 98, a little over 98 newtons. All right, go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, uh, our, our uh, lessons, and our other videos. Take care.